So the question is again, sorry, the, the question, the question. Uh, please uh, tell me the relation between yoga, music, and meditation. All right. Everything that exists is vibration. Yeah. Vibration has frequency. Frequencies can have relationships. The relationships have uh, absolute ontological meaning within the context of the creation because the natural evolution of vibrations from higher to lower produces the harmonic series. And then the various samplings and uh, different relationships in, among those harmonics create all possible combinations of phenomena according to the three guna, yeah. three modes of material nature. So the human body is a microcosm of this macrocosm and it internalizes the same structure of this uh, musical scale, sargam. Uh, and when this scale is in tune, <laughs> the functioning is optimal. And when the scale is out of tune, aswara, then there's disharmony, disease, disquiet, you know, all the negative symptoms that we associate with like material consciousness and neurosis and identification and all. So to get rid of that, Shastra advises that we should hear this uh, swaram, yeah. sapta swaram. Uh, and this sapta swaram has a unique ability to create this vibrational simulacrum of a complete cosmos. Um, so, when you hear this music, like the the um, what's that called? Uh, swaram, swaramandalam. Swaramandalam. Yeah. Okay. When you hear the swaramandalam, it reminds you of this cosmic view, huh? and it elevates your consciousness. And the Kanpura, of course, represents Aum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the threefold yeah. Uh, ultimate reality. So uh, three in one. So um, you have in music a complete model of the principles of cosmic creation. Ring. Yeah. Right? The, 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 the confidential tantric bijam that underlies the creation uh, because once the creation is, is set up like that it just requires a little push and then the whole thing goes on like a machine automatically so like the planets are going around the sun and all these influences are crossing and combining and then we get this this craziness that is you know human life on planet earth it's like we're like we're robots, like we're being driven by these vibrations. Jot, jot, ish. Yeah. Right? So, uh, God as light you know, manages the cosmos through these vibrations and the angles and, you know, uh, interference patterns created when these vibrations cross. Same thing exactly can be modeled in music. Yeah. making it a, the most powerful creative yeah. expression possible. Yeah. And it's dynamic. It's real time. Yeah. And then, of course, musicians experience the kind of telepathy when you start to think together in music. I mean, there's nothing like it except maybe sex when it's really good, you know. And this psychological, yeah, this is this rasa that that musicians enjoy with each other, you know, is like only a reflection of the source of the rag, which is always some deity, ultimately some deity, like Bhairav, Bhairavi, so on like that. Uh, so uh, ultimately it's all about devotion, love, and the flavors of love, which is why... Uh, Raga is a form that developed in the courts of the Muslim uh, uh, occupiers of India uh, in their harems. 
Yeah. And the musicians would play behind the curtain as, to accompany the active's love. So the rag actually, you know, um, um, it, it comes from the combination of two words, one of rati and uh, gandharva. Yeah. Right. So raga. And uh, of course, raga also means attachment. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's that's a whole branch of sound yoga that you can create appropriate music for anything. Not drum. Sorry? Not, not yoga. And not drum. Not yoga, yeah. See, one of my teachers was an a, a adept in not yoga, Charan Singh. Yeah. Charan Singh. He was my, excuse me, the first real Indian guru I ever met. Before I met my Adi Guru, my Diksha Guru. And he taught me this, you know. Ramri Pranam. <laughs> That's called Ramri Pranam. Yeah. The, Ramri Pranam. The, uh, yeah, the, um, what's it called? Uh, was this all told so long ago? Pranayam. Ramri Pranam. <laughs> Radha Swami. Oh, sorry. Radha Swami okay, okay. lineage. So then, um, right after that, I met Bhaktivedanta Swami, who initiated me and in, in, into the, the Bengali bhajan tradition and okay. kirtan bhajan and dance. I also know the dances. So uh, later on, then I I learned the tantric traditions in South India, the, uh, the Kamakshi uh, tradition. And I lived right across the street from a Durga temple, Durga Mandir. And I was uh, intimately involved with uh, her devotees and like that for like five years. And so uh, I, I got my tantric, original tantric training in Kashmir okay. in the 1970s. After my guru passed away, Prabhupada uh, I went to Kashmir, I was invited, and they taught me all that stuff. And my mother was a tantric. <laughs> My mother. Please tell me your name, uh, please. Uh, Adya Shakti Swami Bhagavan. Okay, from where do you belong? What? Uh, which country from? Uh, what? Where are you from? U.S. But I don't like it. Uh, okay. So, what's your real name? My real name? I have no real name. Actually, uh, I have to mention it on my uh, research paper. That's a philosophical answer, but. No, you know. Oh, well, you want I, for a citation? Yeah, I want to. Well, I have to mention your name on my dissertation. You know. But you know, my name is Mud. What? Sorry. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. That's an American expression. Oh. If someone's name is Mud, it means they have a bad reputation in uh, proper circles. You know. <laughs> okay. So you are an introvert, like. I am a because I'm a tantrika. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, so you adopted a new name. Yeah. So uh, could you, you believe in the kind of philosophy that this body has no name? Yeah. The body has a name, but I have no name. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. consider yeah. Spirit, as a spirit has no name. Yeah. It's said in uh, Svetashvatar Upanishad, Brahman is never the object of any action, even the action of knowing. So Brahman cannot be known. The self cannot be known. Yeah. So the universe there, is within you. Huh? Universe is within us. Yes. The space within the heart, Antaryami, yeah. is as big as the space outside. That's another sloka from Upanishad. Uh, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Sorry. Please uh, tell me something uh, like uh, how mu how music can help somebody to. Uh, do meditation and yoga. Do you have any answer? It's complicated. You know, uh, we have we have we have, uh, we have music. You know, we can concentrate. I think we 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 kind of been over all that. You know, we've all we've rarely been over all that. Yeah. Um, it helps you to get your chakras in tune. Yeah, seven chakras. Yeah. Yeah, it helps you get them in tune by educating you. But uh, what is a beautiful interval? What is a beautiful rhythm? What is a beautiful tone? You hear a beautiful music, and then it's like you want to emulate it within yourself, in the way you live, in the way you feel, how you perceive the world, you know. 
And it elevates the quality of our impressions because once we hear something so perfectly beautiful, we will compare everything to it. We'll measure everything by it. We'll see things in terms of its context. Like how much Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, you know, how much they influence the whole Western world. And I don't know so many Indian musicians, but oh, just for example, Subalakshmi. Ah, yeah, I mean, much she influenced people yeah. by the beauty of her music. Her music is impeccable, you know? And when you hear it, it's like, ah, that's perfection, you know? And that she does so many stotrams and, and shlokams, is, you know, has done so much good for so many people. Uh, so this is really our duty. If we know these things, if we know these secrets, uh, not to talk to the public about the theory because they don't care. Yeah. But to talk to other musicians about it so they use it in their work and that benefits everybody. Yeah. But you know, while doing yoga and meditation, you think that music can help us uh, to concentrate on music? Maybe in the beginning stage. Yeah. But no, 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 no. Uh, like Anahat Nad, you know, the sounds we hear. Oh, well, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking but about the Nath. You're not talking about ordinary Hatha Yoga? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not music, not uh, this kind of music. Okay, okay. Not Ahat Nath, you know. Yeah, okay, okay. Anahat Nath yeah. is very important in yoga. Uh, when I'm doing any kind of yoga, I always put some attention on Anahat Nath, on my heart, my pulse, you know, my heartbeat. And it was like the heartbeat is the drum, yeah. and the anahadnad is the harmony and melody. Or no, maybe it's the harmony, it's like the drone, you know, it's the ah. background. And then the mind is the foreground, the melody, ah. like that. So the idea then is to bring them into harmony and to, ha and, and to find beauty in their relationships, you know, within. Music is just such a valuable model to apply to anything. Yeah. And of course, in self-realization, it's especially powerful because the human being is really built on music like the cosmos is. Yeah. Okay. Tell me something about the... Uh, so, uh, have you ha heard about the Soham Pranayam? Oh, of course. Yeah, please tell me something about it. I've practiced it. Yeah, Soham and uh, Brahmari Pranayam. Actually, I want to know. Uh, well, Soham I know. The other one I don't. Uh, which did you... This, this is Brahmari Pranayam. Yeah. Yes, is... Oh, no, I haven't practiced it. Uh, the reason I haven't practiced it is that I think I discovered it spontaneously when I was about three years old. <laughs> huh? Well, yeah, I've been consciously on the spiritual path since I was about three. I woke up one day in the church. I was with my parents and I saw Jesus, you know, praying in the garden like this. And that the light is coming down from God. I looked at that and I said, I want to do that. <laughs> you actually saw this. Oh, is this the stained glass window in the church? Okay. Every big church has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I thought you actually saw. No, 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 no. So that came later. <laughs> you, you actually saw that. Uh, saw that. See something like that. No. Feel the presence of God. Because when you, yeah, when you tune into God, you can be anybody, anywhere, anytime. And you, when you tune into God, you tune into your fundamental consciousness, which has no object except itself. Hmm? Like if I say to you, "Are you conscious?" What are you going to say? I don't know. I don't have any answer. What? Well, you can hear me talking to you. Yeah. But you must be conscious. Yet, huh? Yes, but... Uh, if, did you feel that? Physically, I can... Con con okay, I, but that's I can consciousness. Pretend. That's consciousness. Yeah. That's how Buddha described consciousness. Six times of co kinds of consciousness. Yeah. 
uh, ear, eye, nose, tongue, and touch no, there are five plus senses. the mind. Five senses. And plus the mind makes yeah, six. Six, six kinds of consciousness. But then there's another kind of consciousness that's conscious of consciousness. Now this is going to no, 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 no. Do you know that you're conscious? Uh, <laughs> Normally we are conscious, but actually uh, I don't think we, don't, don't we, conscious. we don't know the feeling. What? <laughs> How is that possible? Yeah, actually we are conscious, but uh, like we uh, haven't. You, you said it. Actually, we are conscious. Yeah. So you know you're conscious. But now, no, knowing that you are conscious means being conscious of being conscious. This is called Turiya. Yeah. Turiya. Turiya. Turiya is this Turiya, consciousness okay, okay. beyond the ordinary consciousness of, yeah. of senses and mind, right? I was talking about that consciousness. Ah, so that's what I'm trying to get at. So Turiya can be reached when all the upadis, the yeah. coverings, are removed from the, the kula path, the, the sushumna path, right? Through the spine? Yeah, seven from chakra. Muladhar to chakra. To, yeah, sastra that. Sastra. Yeah, sastra. So when the goddess rises through this channel, that's when the chakras open and you get yeah, all yeah. the do. When we do the, uh, I think, Anahad Nath Sadhana, actually. Mm. You know? If it's done right, it should happen. So yeah. These things are not philosophical. Muladhar is the. Oh, yeah. yeah. Muladhar is the tiniest yeah. chakra, actually. Uh -huh. Muladhar is the tiniest chakra. Well, but it's the most powerful because it's the source of energy yeah. for all it's, the other ones. It's, a base. it's the one that can create life. Yeah. What is the Cosmic Mother. Shakti. Kundalini. Kundalini actually. Jagriti of Kundalini. Kundalini is described as living in this in this kund. Ah. It's like a depression at the base of the spine, which is the muladhar chakra. Ah, yeah, yeah. Right? Coiled up like a snake, three and a half times. Yeah, yeah, Kundalini. Right. So then when she rises, the, the spiral also rises okay. three and a half times. Yeah. You've seen that, Tandava? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a symbol of that. Yeah. Right? Or the um, the sim symbol of the physicians. It's like a cross of, with wings and these two snakes going up yeah. three and a half times. Yeah. I, I have seen that symbol. It's called the serpent of Caduceus. The serpent of Caduceus. Okay. Yeah. People make it on the ambulance also. Uh, yeah, yeah. Doctor, doctor sign. Yeah. Actually, I was going to talk about so that's a symbol of kundalini. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so when kundalini is in order, when the muladhara chakra is completely open, then there's too much energy available and you feel great and you're happy and yeah, like and you're enlightened actually, you're enlightened. But when when due to repression, neurosis, uh, illness, genetic an anomalies, I'm sorry, accidents or whatever, a person's sex chakra that is, cl is closed or not fully open, you know, uh, then there's insufficient energy to reach this turiya, to clear away all the upadis, especially the grantis, you know, grantis? Yeah. Yeah, there's three grantis, Brahma granti, Vishnu granti, Rudra granti. Here. Here and here, so these are the main blocks because you cannot, you do not have the power to open them. Only the God who controls them, Brahma Vishnu Shiva, can open them. So you have to pray for their blessings, and that's why there's there's four principal yogas. Karma yoga is about opening the Brahma granti. Bhakti yoga is about opening the Vishnu granti. Uh, not uh, Raj yoga meditation. Yeah, yeah, Raj yoga. That's about opening the Rudra granti. Right? And when all are open, then Kundalini can rise without any friction, without any difficulty. Huh? You hear so many stories about Kundalini yoga, people getting sick, all the terrible things happening. It's, 
It's because they're not completely open. They're not completely purified. So there's some resistance. Or they're trying to force. He hates that. Yeah. It's called pranuthan. Pranuthan. Uh, that Jagriti of Kundalini, actually. Is it? Is it, uh, it is called uh, pranuthan, I guess. I don't know that term. Uh, sir, yeah, I, I said that or something about, uh, like, uh, you said, is a, a, you said that, like, uh, if these, uh, the things that seven you, chakra. uh, seven chakras are not working in a perfect coordination, then a person would, like, uh, become dizzy or whatever, you know? But they would feel, yeah. they would feel less they than feel perfectly good, happy. Yes. They won't feel, they feel, they won't feel perfectly happy. Okay. Yeah. So, like, my father is suffering from cancer. So, oh, dear. Did, 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 did. Huh? My father is suffering from cancer, okay? A prostate cancer. So, could it be the reason that oh his God. chakras and all are not working? Probably due to lifelong sexual repression. Okay. Yeah. See, in old age, the prostate naturally enlarges. And if you haven't, if you haven't mastered the, the flow of the Kundalini into, into normal normal sex, whatever that means for you, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. according to taste, uh, if you haven't been able to channel that energy fully, then it can go off. It can, you know, I had trouble recently, even after all my practices, I had trouble with sciatica. Oh, the sciatica is a or dislocation of the root yeah, 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 yeah. of the spine. Uh, I'm still working on it. Man. And I found that part of it was that there was some sexual energy that I was holding back, even at my age. Can you imagine? And uh, <laughs> so that's normal. So once I released it, now it's healing very fast. You know? Otherwise, for almost a full year, I had this sciatica problem. It's really annoying. You, you, you so, are a yogi. Oh, yeah, I yeah. do yoga, hatha yoga every day. Uh, yeah, hatha yoga, okay. The, uh, I, also, I, also, I also do a stang yoga. <laughs> really? Yeah, but I'm, uh, I'm a beginner actually. <laughs> ah, see, this is the problem. I'm getting all wet. Uh, sorry, please. Uh, <laughs> this is the problem. They're calling a stang yoga, yeah. yeah. but they're only teaching asana. Maybe little prana. No, uh... Actually, they are uh, they are teaching us something uh, extra. Uh, yeah, you, know, you know, yes, yam niyam and uh, uh, nadi shodhi pranayam and uh, brahmri pranayam and uh, okay. it, uh, pranayam. Then what? They are uh, doing pratyahara. Uh, pratyahara. Yeah, pratyahara. Pratyahara na. Uh, dhyana. Uh, samadhi. Samadhi. Yeah, they are. Four. That's the four. The other four. Uh, See, the, the lower four are just the pre preparation. The real thing, it begins with pratyahara. Yeah. The senses are withdrawn and focused within on what? Dharana, whatever your object of concentration. But then once the concentration is attained, the object is transcended because concentrated mind gives rise to very interesting phenomena like bliss, siddhis, and, and so many other things, uh, you will be amazed, you know. Uh, you you will come to know things uh, by divine means without any physical channels of communication. And, and so, you know, it just happens. It's not like you want it or you do it. It just happens, you know. So it's uh, all the yogic perfections are they're wrapped up in this realization of the self. But that can only occur when all three the Garantis are completely open, unlocked. Actually, I'm a beginner. You know, uh, they are they teach us that uh, that uh, neti also. You know, jal neti, do neti. Yeah. Oh, that. Net. Yeah. I thought you meant neti neti. Neti, yeah, yeah, neti neti. <laughs> That's another one. Yeah. We, we use to we, we do that that thing you know yeah, yeah. I do that too if I have any blockage I make some salt water and huff it yeah 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 <laughs> uh, uh, is there a way to overcome the fear of death because like I'm a kind of person who is suffering from anxiety okay to so, realize yourself yeah if you know who you really are you're not going to be afraid of death. Like I'm suffering from anxiety and the most strongest fear that I have is the fear of death. For everybody. You're not alone. 
not yeah, me too. Yes. Yeah. How to overcome everybody, it. especially every intelligent person. Some fools, they're not going to care anything. For, you know, what if I die tomorrow? I don't care. Yeah, but but intelligent care. people, we have something to live for. Yeah. Life is, is beautiful to some extent anyway. Huh? Like music, you know, it's so beautiful. No, That's something to live for. When I look at you, I don't see the fear of death in your eyes. It's true. Because I've you gone through it, you know, that, I've gone beyond death. So, so uh, what you know, is the way to overcome it? What yeah. dies? Who dies? The body. the body dies. Right. The body and the ego. Yeah. So fear of death comes from the ego. The ego is a self-perpetuating thought pattern, a habitual thought pattern engraved in the mind by many repetitions of the similar impressions, and some scars. And uh, the ego is wants to perpetuate itself. So anything that threatens its existence is a source of great fear. See? But what is it? Is there what is there to lose? This body is impermanent anyway. You knew that when you came here. Uh, you know, we, uh, I, I I know the truth, but uh, behind this, you know, the body is nothing. But uh, the, 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 fear the fear is still fear is still here. It's an existential yeah. fear. I totally understand it. I used to feel it myself, yeah. but yeah. I don't anymore. Uh, you know, the fear death is actually, if you are a consummate yogi, death is your friend. You make friends with death. You know, you know the story Sveta Ketu? Sveta Ketu. Please educate us. Yeah. Here's this in Upanishads. Yeah. Can we go inside? Yes. It's getting sure. freaking cold in here. Sure. There's the shawl which I give Yeah, I don't want to catch cold. Yes. Tomorrow. Yeah. He's coming. It's getting too cold. He's going to get the shawl. Yeah. No, we want to go inside and talk. Yeah. 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 That's better. It's getting rain. There's getting rain coming out there. Ah, please take care. Yeah. Um, okay. What were we talking about? Oh, fear of death. Of death. Yeah. Okay. The only fear I have. <laughs> Me too. So, what? What dies? Who dies? The body dies. Yes. Yeah, so the ego. And the ego dies. The ego is part of the body slash mind yeah. complex, uh, right? Yeah, the so the time. ego. I'm, I'm sorry that we are we are drinking in front of you. The, uh, the ego is like, oh, yeah. the ego actually doesn't exist. It's just a thought. I'm not a water. I'm, um, the ego is just a thought. It doesn't really exist. It's an abstraction, like a country or a philosophy or anything made out of words and symbols. The ego is simply a thought construct. And we're always afraid of making any change in the ego because deep down the ego knows that it's false. It, it knows that it's just a symbol, just a projection like a movie. And the ego is always struggling to adapt to change because it doesn't want to change, isn't it? Yeah. Everybody wants to remain the same, but things don't stay the same. Yeah. Nature of the world has changed. So the ego is really afraid of that and struggles to deal with that. And of course, the biggest change is death. You know, and, and nobody can avoid it. It's, yeah. uh, death is caused by birth. <laughs> yeah. If you're born, you're going to die. Yeah. So, all right. Then how do we deal with that? Well, we have to realize is what is our real self? It's not our body, it's not our mind, it's not our ego, our name, our, our way of making our living, or even our art, or, 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 or our original thoughts, or any of that. None of that is really who we are. And who we are is simply pure consciousness. We're the watcher. Huh? You've heard that Drik Drishya Viveka? Yeah. Yeah, Drik Drishya. Drik Drishya. Yeah, we are the Drik. We are the seer, we're the witness. 
example, see, where Brahman being entertained by Maya. Yeah. Entertained. We should be able to enjoy it. Yeah. For like, a limited like time. Like a show, sorry? Like a show in for a very limited time, right? Yes, it's, like a show. it's limited, like exactly. Like a musical company. Like we are having this time, you know. Yeah. So, so what about the fear of physical pain, you know? Most well, that's people... another thing. Who yeah. likes pain? I don't know. I mean, uh, certain kinds. Of yeah. Like most of the people <laughs> fear death because of the physical pain they are going to experience when they... they, no, they that's, when they that's valid and one should take steps to avoid it. That's a, the best reason to work on your health and make your body strong and do yoga and have a good diet and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have easy totally death. Yes, because I have seen so many people suffering before they die, you know, and that has like impacted on... This is called, body, you know. There is something called karma. Do you think that? So you, you look at your kundali chakra, you find out your nakshatra, you find the exact degree and the and the covering star, and you look up the predictions and you find out how you're going to die, and then you take steps to uh, uh, to appease the the deity, the planet, the gra graha, right? and the and the deity, the controlling lord of that nakshatra, mm -hmm. and you do seva and you please that deity. And he'll be okay. He'll, you know, make things easy, like that. So my guru, the first book I ever read by my Adi guru, was called "Easy Journey to Other Planets." Easy journey to another. What is he talking about? He's talking about dying consciously. Wow, I love it. So that you go dying consciously through bhakti yoga. Yeah. So that you go to the loka. Of your Ishta Devata. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's Bhakti, Tantra, that's even Dhyana, mm -hmm. Raj Yoga, everything is mm -hmm. aimed at that. Mm -hmm. Krishna says, Yam Yang Vapismaran Bhavang Tyajatante Kalevaram Tang Tang Evanti Kalanteya Sadata Bhavavavata. And whatever you're thinking at the time of death, mm -hmm. that you will attain in the next life. So, Definitely. Yep. There is no doubt about this. So true. I feel, I feel it. Yes. So what do you think of at the time of death? He said, your whole life passes before your eyes. Yeah. So the sum total of all the sung scars created during the whole life is going to be like, like a tape rewinding yeah. in yeah. your mind at the time of death. So in other words... What we do now, what we think, speak, and do now creates impressions in the mind. And at the time of death, all those impressions, the sum total of all those impressions will, will review. It's called life review. Yeah. It happens right before death. And then you, yourself, judge yourself. And you say, oh, so I then I should have this kind of body in the next life, this kind of birth, this so kind of son. We ourselves choose yeah. the next life. Yes. We Who else is there? Who else is there besides the self? Yeah. The self is all-powerful. Yeah. The self creates the world. That's why I'm not afraid so all of the pain and <laughs> All the pain and... And the hurt memories that we live in this lifetime, we have already created at the soul level yes. to go through the same thing, mm -hmm. same experience. And the, the victory in life is transforming our attitudes so we see those as lessons instead yes. of some kind of assault or attack. Yes. Okay, so, so, uh, so like when we are about to die and we see our whole life, you know, the journey of our whole life, and we uh, like choose... Uh, the next life, you know, we, we decide how we are going to live the next life. So, uh, at that time, why don't we have the kind of fear that a person should have, you know, uh, the fear of suffering and all that we are going to have in our next life? No, because we're on a different level at that point. We are on like the Vishnu level or the Shiva level, see? Uh, we are capable of creating whole worlds. 
So the physical pain doesn't matter at that time. No. And we think, oh, that would be a fun thing to do, you know. <laughs> but then when we get into it and we're trapped in it, in samsara, it's not much fun at all. Okay. You because know? we start to uh, feel the actual pain physically. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, I didn't want this. I just wanted the cool mood that goes along with it. But no, you have to hold. You have to get the whole package. Okay, so, so the the people who are living miserable lives right now have chosen it. To uh, go through that pain because they did something terrible in the past, yeah, past, past. Yeah. and they say, "Oh man, yeah. I deserve this." And they must have been the millionaires and the billionaires of those times, and the jamidars who had done wrong thing to the poor misery farmers and yeah 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 so now they are seeing the life who are now begging on the streets of mumbai or anywhere yeah, else because they're, yeah, they're they getting have purified from abused it. the power and the misuse of money okay. which at that time they were not realizing how blessed they were in terms of being a millionaire or a billionaire or a rich person now life and the karma is showing them this lifetime. Now you live. How does it feel to live on a street or a footpath where you don't have a house, no big villa, no. A anything? So, so the, this is what uh, of like yeah. past yeah. lifetime. And, and this, this lifetime, them. whatever we are doing, That's the we point. are creating a base oh, yeah, and the foundation. Sure. It, it purifies them yeah. to go through that suffering. Yeah, it, it's like a healing uh, process, right? So, so, so the animals, you know, let's talk about the animals, you know, the street dogs. The and, same thing, and, but just more extreme. Okay, so like a soul, like right now, I mean, okay, so like, can I become an animal or like? Uh, it's possible. Okay. You did something really nasty. Okay. Yeah, it's a kind of hell that that they have to go through, um, suffering the limitations of animal life. So, no? so, so uh, what is the criteria? Like, if I am thinking something like you know, I have sexual feelings. For example, you know, if I'm a young person and I am having sexual feelings, you know, which are not right according to the Vedas and all, you know. Wait a minute! Oh, stop right there. <laughs> yeah. Where does it say in Vedas that yes. sex is wrong? No, yeah. Where does it say? Such a powerful I don't have any idea energy. about it. That's the point. You heard from somebody else yeah. who didn't know yeah. anything. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And they convince you that that was that it's said in there, but it's not. If you go read it, you can read Vedas from one end to the other, and it never says. What it does say is, if you're a Vijam, yeah. Brahmana, a uh, religious teacher, yeah. temple priest, or yeah. guru, yeah. like that, then you have to abstain from sex. Mm -hmm. Only for the brahmanas, high-class brahmanas, huh? Manu Shastra says, okay. and gives penalties, various penalties, for the different castes for various offenses. And for the lower uh, castes, yeah. ordinary people, which is every, all, everybody in Kali Yuga, <laughs> yeah. um, there are no penalties. You can do whatever you want according to your taste. Okay. So, and Kama Sutra, let me finish. Kama Sutra is, is a compilation of ancient works. Of, um, Vyatsyayana just. Vyatsyayana, yeah. yeah, he just compiled, um, he like digests of, mm -hmm. of the different erotic works that were extant at the time. Yeah. And um, so he like was selecting the best of them, making a digest, you know. And um, so he's saying then, uh, according to Manu Shastra, that each uh, type of sexuality person should have a type, uh, like a family area, like a neighborhood, where they can stay with others of the same kind. Mm -hmm. So, okay. 90% or maybe 80% of humans are totally straight, right? And then another 10% are bisexual, and then the other 10% is all the rest. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
homosexuals, trans, transsexuals, yeah. intersexuals, yeah. whatever, yeah. right? Non-binary, yeah. whatever. Yeah. So those people should have a, a quarter of the city where they reside and live amongst themselves and do as they like. Yeah. This is what's stated in Manu Shastra, but nobody talks about that. Mm -hmm. because of 600 years of occupation by foreign governments in India. Mm -hmm. They suppressed it. Every translation in English of Kama Sutra is missing all the chapters on the third sex, for yeah. example. Yeah. Everyone except one French guy, <laughs> Alain Donnelly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and and he's the only one who's like cool enough and savoir faire enough, you know, to actually translate it as it is. And he, yeah, so he's done a great service. I follow his Kama Sutra. The sexual energy is such a sacred and important energy to use if we use it in terms of the energy level because it, it mm. everything is energy and sexual energy is the energy for creativity and the procreation. Let me, and let it me is wait the one embodiment point. of Shiva and Shakti energy where the masculine and the feminine yeah. and the animal and the animals is emerging yeah. and becoming one. And because of that, yeah. just like when a person becomes enlightened, mm. it's not that they stop eating mm. or sleeping or going to the bathroom, mm -hmm. well, why should they stop having sex? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. See, it's this confusion with the Brahmana caste. Yeah. But it, the enlightenment is not limited to the Brahmana class. Anyone can become enlightened who has the, the right intention. So it's, it's, you know, even a rascal like me. <laughs> these things about yourself. No, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if, there, if there's any sin other than, than, than killing or beating yeah. someone, I've done it. <laughs> okay? I've been around, kid. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so, yeah. Any ordinary person, doesn't matter their past or whatever, they can become enlightened if they have sincere intention, because enlightenment is not something you do. It's a blessing of God that's given to you when God wants, not when you want. That's why some people can do sadhana their whole life and never get anything, because yeah? their intention is somehow wrong. But if your intention is right, then at some point, like my Adi Guru used to say, don't act so that you can see God. Act so that God okay. wants to come and see you. Wow. So beautiful. Like at Bhishma, at the end of yeah. the Battle of Kurukshetra, he's on the bed of, of arrows, right? And everybody is there. Krishna is there in the form in his forearm form as Vishnu. Shiva is there, uh, Sati is there, Brahma is there. Vyas was there, everybody was there, right? Mm -hmm. And Bhishma is giving Vishnu Sahasrana. They his such intense bhakti attracted all of them, the greatest personality. So that's how one actually gets enlightenment that God or goddess comes to you. It happened to me. I should tell the story. Okay, but I have to drink something. I, let me go grab the water. I'll do this. Second. Got it. So, okay, the story. Oh, that's okay. In 1984, and then this is after I had been to India several times mm -hmm. and had studied Tantra in Kashmir and all that. Mm -hmm. And I became a disciple of Osho Rajni. Mm -hmm. Then I uh, met him in India, in Pune. Yeah. Just I, think I, I for just to stay there in Koregampa. Attempt to, just uh, for a short time. Take a pillow, my dear. Yeah, that's all right. Okay.
Yeah. Have okay, you been to Pune? One time I... only, for a few days only. Okay, I used and, to stay there. Yeah. Uh, so I heard Incredible. Secret of Secrets yeah. in 1978. Okay. Okay. And in 1980, mm -hmm. when he came to Oregon, mm -hmm. I started spending time on the ranch. Mm -hmm. So in 1984, by 1984, I uh, had been to the ranch several times. And then that was when they had the big program, come stay at the ranch. So I went, stayed at the ranch for six months, about six months. And he never gave me anything to do. He said, no, you just, you stay alone and you simply meditate. That was his only instruction. Yeah. So I stayed alone way out in the desert and just meditate and walk and like that. So after some time, the other disciples found out. And of course, they were jealous. And so they got me kicked out. So I went to my place in Portland. And I was still in very deep meditation mood. And I just sat. Like 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. Just sat looking within and it was so interesting <laughs> so interesting um and that that went on for about six weeks about six weeks and one day i had got up uh, from the sitting and made a little lunch you know and i did a little tantric meditation you know and after that i'm getting ready to take a nap i was going to lie down I feel somebody's in the room. You know, I was so sensitive because of all the meditation. I could even feel like I lived in an apartment house. I could feel when people would come and go in the building. It was really sensitive. So I could feel there's this, there's a woman in this in my room. How does she get, I can feel her, but I can't see anything. And suddenly, pop, I got this tap, you know, right there on the third eye. And boom. That was it. <laughs> I could see everything. I could see Brahman in the world. I could see the world in Brahman. I could see all the living creatures as, as Brahman, reflections of Brahman shining in the heart. And I mean, God, I could see everything. And the bliss. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that was it. I mean, that was the real thing. And I knew it in that moment. This is it. And, um, but it took me 35 years of study to understand it. To get there. Right, fully. Fully get there. And it happened just on, on this trip. When I came from Sri Lanka, I stayed in Puri. For, Purisa. Huh? Purisa. For, yeah, one of my favorite Today places. Today is Jagannath Yatra Day. It's yeah. special. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Like the day when we met. Yeah. Is it midnight? Uh, no, if it is not, then still it is Jagannath Puri Yatra today. So it's it's such an auspicious day that we are meeting each other as soul family. Yeah, Jagannath. Yeah. How we? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that that was it, and but it took a long time for me to get the background to be able to understand really the significance and how it happened and and everything, and um, I had to go into so many things. But now, on this trip in, in Jagannath Puri, um, I don't know. It's just like one day I was walking down the street, <laughs> and there's so many highly evolved people there, uh, and it was just like the the veil was drawn, you know, mm. the curtain was drawn, and I saw everything as it is. And I was like, oh, okay, this is Maya, huh? <laughs> that was all my. So, I don't know, since then, everything's been different. I don't know, I can't explain it exactly. Yet. Mm. But it's like all of, the, all of the sadhana and all of the learning and all that kind of disappeared. And now it's like just that this is just the way it is.
you know, and I don't feel an urge like to learn things anymore to, I mean, I used to be such a bookworm and I, I never read now. I love to hear the mantras and chants and stotrams and sahasranam and like that. Yeah. But I, I don't have any taste for chanting them in a, in a, anymore. It's weird. Is, is there any specific god or goddess or any deity that you particularly believe in that, you know? Kamakshi. Oh! Ishtar, my Ishtar Devata is Kamakshi. 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 And, and, and my personal crush is... Narasimha Dev. Oh my god. And <laughs> Narasimha Dev is my Ishtadev of the place oh. where I belong to from the top. <laughs> See the image. Yeah, the so, lion family. So uh, Kamakshi is, uh, who is she uh, uh, oh. signifying or personifying as? Take apart the name. Kam means what? Eros. Uh, Eros. Eros. Right. What is she doing? She's holding the arrows, the yeah. bow and arrows, right? Mm -hmm. Cupid's bow yeah. And, yeah. and arrows. Yeah. Arrows of flowers. Yeah, I, beauty. Yeah, beauty. Love. These things. Yeah. And, and the Kama Dev from Kama Sutra. Kama Dev is the masculine Akshi. aspect Akshi. of Kama. But, the arrows. What else so is Kama she, she is the feminine yeah. energy or the feminine version of Kama. Kama. Mm -hmm. Ah. Ksha. Ah means not. Ksha is the last bijam of the matrika. Mm -hmm. uh, the final bijam. Sha, sa, sha, sha, ha, ksha. Yeah. And it's always chanted like that. Why? It's a weapon. Ksha is a weapon. Ksha bijam is a weapon. See? So, uh, Aksha means it is never destroyed. Ksha, because Ksha means the end. It's mm -hmm. the last, right? So, Aksha, uh, E, this is the feminine ending, that's all. So, yeah. Kama, Aksha, Yikes! Hey! It's the Leave Kamakshi. Alone. It's the Kamakshi who has an idea. <laughs> Kamakshi. It's, uh, no, it's all right. It, it, it is. It's all right. It's only a roach. <laughs> you 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 evoked the Kamakshi. It, it has come. Just sit down. Just be relaxed. Yeah, be cool. It's Come only on, a bug, down. man. It's not going to attack you. You guys who are so much into such a Creative and spiritual space, you should not. He's a and we are not. Big strong man, come on. Come on. <laughs> so, by the way, uh, just to share, my name is Meenakshi. Oh, nice. So, Meenakshi is, uh, if we break the word, mean is the fish. fish. Akshi is, or eyes. Akshu, Akshu is the fish, eyes. Fish eyes. The eyes of a fish is the, the word. Meenakshi, Meenakshi means. Yeah, and what it means is that her eyes are always moving mm. because she's keeping up with her different devotees. Yeah. She loves her devotees and she's very interested in. She becomes their personal friends. I've experienced this. She would appear in my dreams and teach me. Who? Kamakshi or the goddess? The goddess, the generally. Goddess. You know, yeah, yeah. she has all these different forms. The mother goddess. Yeah, I think it, it's just one. Right. Yeah. Right. So she would appear in my dreams. And at first she was silent. And then she started to teach me. And this lasted for a long time. And then finally she became like my friend. I, I didn't ask for this, you know, because I have so much respect for her. You know? But I, I'll just give you an example. I had a dream. I was riding a motorcycle in the rain. I used to ride a motorcycle. And I, I ride up to this place like this super modern super like opulent beautiful cool place okay mm -hmm. and um and i go in and it's like it's like a bar kind of like a bar a restaurant kind of thing all natural beautiful wood and shells and everybody's dressed so beautifully but casually you know kind of these you know thousand dollar cashmere sweaters that kind of a thing very ritzy, ritzy. 
and she is there. And I don't know her, but I always see her and she sees me. And then we sit together and she's like my, it's like I'm sitting with my girlfriend, it's like we're on a date. She's that mood, you know? And she's wearing this very soft,